Hello, church. Welcome to Isaiah 50, 51, and 52. When you read Isaiah 50, verse 6, I want to say this. Don't get any ideas, please, because Isaiah says that he turned his back and offered his cheeks to those who pulled out his beard. I don't know if I would be quite as gracious. <laughs> and I would prefer if you didn't test me on that. But anyways, I want to point out some just awesome things. In chapter 50, verse 1, it's an interesting, a little bit of an interesting verse, and sometimes a little bit hard to understand verses like this. I'm going, I'm going to paraphrase it for you, and based on my paraphrase, can immediately land this on something just quite wonderful. That verse paraphrase could land on something like this. The feelings of abandonment that you are feeling are not based on a character flaw of God. They're actually a result of your sin. That would be a loose paraphrase of that verse and could already get us to a place on that verse, first verse alone. And we could say, ask God a question like this and say, God, do I ever blame you for problems that are created by my sin? Then as we keep on going in verse four and five, these are some of the, my most favorite verses in the Bible. They are very, very precious verses. It talks about how the sovereign Lord has given in Isaiah an instructed tongue. Like he knows the word that sustains the weary because God is putting those thoughts and words into his mind. He's putting them in his mouth so that when Isaiah speaks, he's actually speaking the very words of God. Just like 1 Peter 4 says, we should do when we're speaking. This is an astounding thing that God would do that to people. And it says that his ears were, were uh, being awakened like one listening. This is where we get that idea of listening to the Lord's voice because he's giving, implanting in people's minds words that he wants us to say or wants us to know and apply to our lives. This is an astounding thing that God would do this already in the Old Testament through the power of his Holy Spirit. Jesus was doing that to his disciples. He also gave them the words to say. You can look at Matthew 10 for an example of that. We even know that it's going to go into the future because in Luke 21, Jesus said that after he was uh, had died and gone to heaven already, he was continue, uh, going to continue giving words and wisdom to his followers. What an, an astounding thing to know that God still is in the business of doing this. But we need to accurately see that so far in the verse 4 through the beginning of verse 5, we can see that God is sovereignly doing this. It is something that God is doing and he has control over, we do not. Okay, important to under, see that. However, Isaiah does have a role to play here because in the end of verse 5, Isaiah says, I have not been rebellious, I have not drawn back. And so we see that Isaiah does have a role to play. While God is speaking and God does that sovereignly, Isaiah can choose whether or not he will respond or whether or not he'll be rebellious and actually draw back or whether he is going to incline his ear and listen. Galatians 5 has another way of explaining that to us as well. It says, since we live by the Spirit... Okay, that is something that happens sovereignly to all Christians. It then says, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Now that is a choice we have to make, right? And so there's this beautiful tension of God gives those thoughts and words into our minds, and yet we have an obligation to come, incline our ears, or and keep in step with the Spirit. Maybe, let's just celebrate that with the Lord today and say, just a basic question, which has incredibly profound implications. But we could say, Lord Jesus... What would you like me to know today? Talk to him. Open up a question like that uh, and, and celebrate that with the Lord. He is going to point you in places that line up with Scripture and line up with his heart. And he will show you where he wants to lead you today. Celebrate that with him. That is the, that is the abundant life to, that, that God calls us to. Then in chapter 51, look at what it says in verse 6. I'm just going to pick this verse out of here, okay? It says, uh, Isaiah says, look to the heavens, look to the earth. In other words, look everything around you, okay? Everything you can see with your eyes. They, the, the heavens are going to vanish like smoke. The earth is going to wear out. Can you imagine Isaiah promoting a message that says, guys, the earth is wearing out. <laughs> guys, the earth is going to wear out. It probably wasn't a super popular message, or maybe it was, I don't know. But the implication is what? The implication is that salvation comes from the Lord. That's what it says in the end of verse 6. Now, this is interesting. We actually hear a similar message. Have you ever heard a message maybe on the news or uh, somewhere in society today, wherever you get your flavor of that, uh, that says, guys, the earth is wearing out. We hear it all the time. I'll just call that 
the, the news about climate change. Fantastic. The, worth, the earth is wearing out. Isaiah was prophesying it back here already. The New Testament makes the same case. In 2 Peter chapter 3, it says the same thing. This whole earth is wearing out. In fact, eventually it will be destroyed and burned. Everything you see up or down or sideways here is going to burn and wear out. The implication, the only difference is from what the world called the world's message of, hey, everything is wearing out, then says, let's save the earth. The biblical message is, the earth is wearing out, so let's save your souls. It's a very different landing point. And so we could ask this question today and say, Lord, are there conversations with people about the wearing out of the earth that I can use to actually bring people to the need for salvation? Then when we get into chapter 52, this is incredible. We, we are not doing the book of Isaiah justice. We are skipping so many pieces. But let me just quickly say this. Verse 7 is clearly connected to Romans chapter 10, quoted in the New Testament. You cannot separate the New Testament and Old Testament. It's the one same story, the one same God. And when you get into verse 13, 14, and 15, this is clearly talking about Jesus. This is prophecy about the, the mystery and the suffering of the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. And when it talks about in verse 13 about him being lifted up and highly exalted, that has every reference to him on the cross. And when in verse 15, when it says that he is sprinkling many nations, it references the atonement that comes through the blood of Jesus. You might just land that on praise to Jesus today, or you might even just tell Jesus something like this. Lord Jesus, in the same way that the whole Bible is about you, I want my whole life to be all about you. Enjoy your day with Jesus.